Welcome. I'm making this slow stitch needle book today. It's small, can take it anywhere, and it's made completely by hand. Inside, there aren't pages. There's just a functional front and back cover to keep thread and a few needles. Just anything you need for a small project. So let's get started. Hi. I'm starting with a piece of felt and the dimensions I'm working with are five and a half by three and three eighths inches, which is 14 by eight and a half centimeters. And you can see folded in half, it's gonna make a nice small little book, just the right size for a few needles and a few little supplies. So first of all, I've grabbed a piece of fabric that is about the right width and it's a little longer. So what I think I'm gonna be able to do is to fold this piece over towards the back. So that's gonna be the beginning of the fabric that's on the inside. And I like the colors and I like the way this is gonna look. So I'm just pulling out some pieces of fabric and, and thinking about what's gonna go well with this base piece of fabric. What kind of little tiny scraps of fabric am I gonna want to put on, knowing that the pieces are gonna be on the back and the front and always keeping in mind that this is gonna be folded in half. So first of all, I'm choosing colors of thread that I think work really well with the background. So I'm just starting with this kind of turquoise color that goes and an accru. And I think that those are going to go with most of the fabrics that I'm starting with. So now it's time for me to pick the first pieces of collage that are going to go on this little book. So the audition starts with two fabrics, this green with a few other colors in it, and this kind of bright golden yellow. And I really like the way that it looks against the other blue and green fabric. Now I just need to decide where I want it to go, how I want it to look. So I just move it around and I start to think about uh, what the book's gonna look like on each side. And I think that this smaller piece like this might be nice. So I'm thinking about cutting it in half and maybe I would put a piece on each side. So this is where I'm starting to think about the fact that maybe I want to try and make both ends symmetrical. So meaning the front and the back cover would have some sort of symmetry while not trying to be perfect about the symmetry, but to maybe have patches of fabric that are very, very similar on each side, the front and the back, except for perhaps maybe that the one side would have the button. And so it would be easy to tell what was the front and the back, but that there'd be some sort of design consistency. That might be a fun way to approach this project. The, the pieces of fabric are small enough that I should be able to accomplish this. So I'm starting with these two pieces, stitching them in place, just using some straight stitches, doing a few rows to attach everything. And then I'm going to move across with straight stitches, going through all the way to the back. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other patch of fabric. Just do slow stitches up and down the piece, attaching it with this ecru thread. Now before I add any more patchwork, I'm going to choose a button. So I'm just grabbing some different buttons, sizes and colors and shapes to see what I like. It's going to really inform the next pieces of patchwork and the stitching that I do. So I really want to put it on now. And you know, you really can't go wrong. There's some really nice buttons I've found here, but I decide that I'm going to either use the green or the pink. So at this point, I'm deciding that I'm gonna bring in some additional thread colors. And so I've pulled out some greens and some blues and some yellows that I think might work really well. And then of course, I'm gonna need a pink so I found a really nice cranberry pink that I think will go well with that pink button. Then I have my accru that I've already started stitching with. Now it's time to add more patches of fabric. So I've pulled out this green fabric and it 
kind of has these light, almost white, but really they're pale, pale green lines on them. And I think it's really nice. So I just have to decide how big I want the pieces to be and where I want them to go. That's just a process of moving them around and looking at them and seeing what I like. So I decide that I'm going to cut them a little bit smaller. And I find that they can go in a couple of different places. So they're going to be on the front and the back. And I'm wanting to keep that idea of doing the front and back very similar pattern, kind of symmetrical. So I cut the other piece and I fit it in. Now I've picked a thread that is kind of matching with the green. It's sort of a turquoise greeny blue color. And I'm going to use that thread to stitch on these patches. So I'm not really sure exactly how I want to stitch at this point. So I'm just going to do one row of stitching right across so that those pieces are attached. And I'm not going to do any more stitching on them at this point. I'm just going to move up to the top and I'm going to stitch on those patches near the top of the piece. Now as I start stitching at the top, I decide that it would be nice to stitch them on in rows like I did with the yellow piece. So I end up doing a few rows right across on these top pieces to secure them down and to add the texture. Now I decide it's a good time to attach the button. I have enough patchwork in place to kind of know that I want this pink button on and that it's gonna add a nice design element and the color's a bit different. So I stitch it on and I make sure that I go back through and I wind the thread around a few times and that's gonna lift the button up. It'll make it easier for the loop to be attached when I'm opening and closing the needle book. So now I'm bringing out my fabric again. I'm gonna add more little pieces of patchwork. So I've got this piece that's green with little dots on it and I'm gonna put it right underneath the button and stitch it on using the accrue thread. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. I've chosen a green piece of cord that I have and I'm just trying to gauge what length to cut it and also just seeing if I like the look of it and it's gonna work for me and I think it is. So I'm cutting a length about three inches long. So I cut that and I'm going to stitch it in. So I'm using a smaller needle and I'm taking my usual two strands of thread and I'm just using one. Now I'm getting out my marker and I just wanna make sure to mark a place so that I stitch this so it's going to be in the right spot. I think it's a good time for me to stitch it in right now because it's going to be covered up by the next layers of fabric and stitch. And as I stitch this, I'm trying to make sure that it's flat so there's not too much bulk. But most of all, I really want it to be secure because it's gonna be pulled on, it's going to have to last. So I just go around and around many, many times, securing it in place. Now that the button and the loop are secured, I want to add a layer of fabric on the inside. So I've chosen this piece that's blue with the dots. I don't know how much of this in the end is going to be seen, but at this point, it's good to add this layer and it's going to add a thickness to it. It's gonna add body to the piece and it's going to cover up everything that I've done up to this point, but mostly the button and the loop. So I'm just going through and doing straight stitches across on the inside. I'm not too worried about what's going to show on the outside because I still have lots of stitching to do there. So I'm just going across and making sure that this is secure I also know that as I continue to stitch on the outside, that there's going to be lots of stitching coming through to this side. So I'm not too, too worried about anything except for securing it in place so it doesn't shift around too much and it stays where I want it to be. I do take special care when I come around to where I have the cording and I move around that and make sure that I've secured it with an extra layer of stitching.
And then I just move down the side and I'm gonna go across the bottom with my goal again to just secure this piece of fabric in place so it doesn't shift around. So now that I've stitched two rows across the top and one across the bottom, I just have one more side that isn't secure. So I'm just gonna stitch up that last side. And then this piece is secured enough in place that I can continue stitching on the front. So I turn my attention to the background where I don't have patchwork and I want to stitch through all these layers and add lines, slow stitching lines. And I'm using the green thread for this, but I feel free to just switch colors as I want with just the goal of adding the stitching and the texture all around the patchwork pieces. I just work my way around, under, and across the piece. And what this is doing is quilting it in a way. It's attaching all the layers together. And it's making the piece one. All the pieces of patchwork are becoming integrated with the background fabric. Not that there's not more patchwork that I may add later, but at this point, it's unifying everything and making it one. This is really a slow, relaxing process. And I know I've sped up the video here, but in reality, I'm not rushing. I'm moving slowly. I'm making sure that I'm comfortable, that I'm sitting in a comfortable chair, that I'm not slouching. I'm remembering to breathe. And I'm just really enjoying this process, watching the piece come together, watching the color of the thread, going through the different fabrics and seeing the new fabric that's created from the stitching. Now I'm deciding that I wanna add more patchwork to what's already there. And so I'm just choosing this fabric. It's kind of a, a pinky ready tone with a off-white background. And I think it goes really well. And then I also add yellow pieces that have a bit more of an orange tone. And then I'm gonna stitch them down. And some of my stitches are gonna go on top of stitches that are already there. And that's okay. That's part of this process where stitches are layered and because it's an intuitive process, there ends up being this layering process where small pieces of fabric get put on top of areas where there's already stitching. And that just adds to the overall joy of creating the piece, that it's continually evolving and changing, and there's always more to be added as the process continues until the point comes when you just feel that the piece is done. But at this point, there's still lots of stitching to be done. And these pieces of patchwork that I've added are really adding quite a bit to the piece. Very different in tone, different in color, and really filling out the areas that were blank. So these sort of orange yellowy pieces at the top, I'm also adding with this accru thread. And then the next step is going to be going around all of the pieces, sort of like doing a satin stitch, although I don't plan on doing the stitches quite as close together. Before I do that, I've decided to bring in that pink thread, that cranberry color, and begin adding a border around the entire book. I wanna see what this looks like, adding this extra color in. I'm thinking that I want this to be uh, my border. I want it to be sort of a thicker line of pink, but for my first round, I'm doing a blanket stitch. I'm spacing them out to see how I feel about the color. 
And I do this a lot in my pieces where I begin on the edges with a blanket stitch spaced out and that helps me decide what color I want, how thick I want the stitching to be. And in this case, because it's a book, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to want to have almost a satin stitch, which I think I will do uh, with a blanket stitch because it's on the edge. So this first round is almost like a test run for the color and the line. So when I'm coming to the end of this first round, I still have thread left on my needle and I'm liking this color of this dark pink. So I decide that I'm going to move down the spine of the book with this color and I'm just going to do some stitches spaced out all the way down the spine from where it's going to bend so that it's going to show on both sides. It'll be on the spine and it'll come up a little bit onto the back and the front. Now I'm gonna bring in a new color and it's a yellow. It's a bright yellow that's very similar to the color of the very first patches that I added to this book. And I'm doing more straight stitching. There's some areas where I hadn't added it before in either the green or the ecru. So I'm filling in the background and sort of completing that idea of unifying the patchwork pieces with the background. Taking small stitches on both the front and the back cover of the book. Finding all the areas that weren't stitched previously and filling them all in. I've jumped ahead here and you can see that I've done more rounds of blanket stitch around the edge of the piece. And so now it's a nice solid pink color. And I've added more stitching to the spine as well. And I've decided that I want to add even more. So I'm just coming in with this dark pink color. I'm adding a row of stitching to widen that stripe of uneven stitches in the pink color. That way it's going to show even more on the front and the back cover. I'm going to work my way down the one side and up the other. And if I think it needs more, I'm just going to continue to add stitching. This is really going to define the spine. It's going to make it match with the edging that's really thick and pink. And yet it's going to be its own unique part of the book. It's time to stitch around all of the patches. I think this is a really important part of doing this kind of free form raw edge patchwork. To at some point, go around and stitch down the edges of all the patchwork. It's really necessary when the piece is going to be touched and used and bent a lot. I think it keeps the raw edges from unraveling too much. It still leaves this kind of this free form look but it secures them down in a way that it makes the piece really functional. So I'm gonna switch my thread color depending on which patch I'm doing, but really I'm stitching in the same way. I'm just going around and I'm surrounding all the edges with straight stitches, securing them down and keeping them from fraying and continuing to make this just a really functional piece. I've stitched around all of the patches and I feel like it's done. If we take a look at the inside, you can see all the stitching that I've done. And what I wanna put in here is felt on one side and a pocket on the other side. So here's my piece of felt. It's actually a sweater that's been washed so it's shrunk and it's felted. It's very, very soft. It's 100% wool and I've cut a square to size. It's nice and thick, and I think it's gonna work really well for this book. On the other side, I wanna put a pocket. So I've got this piece of fabric, and I've ironed it so that I've folded up an edge twice to form the pocket, and I'm just gonna stitch that in place right over top of the fabric and all the stitching that's come through. And I think that's gonna work really well for this piece. There's still gonna be some of the stitching that we'll be able to show, and that's gonna be fine. So I'm going to stitch this pocket on, just down these sides and across the top, 
in the bottom, leaving this part open as a little pocket to maybe put in a needle threader or some small little spools of thread. Then I'm going to stitch this piece of felt down on this side for the needles to go in. I'm stitching down the pocket using the same method that I've used for the patches. Stitching around, securing it in place with my first round. And I just keep checking to make sure that I'm not pulling it, that it's not shifting too much. And the stitch I do along the bottom is just a back stitch. It's a very secure stitch. It's a little bit more invisible than the other stitch, but it works really well to secure everything in place. And now I'm gonna attach my wool felt. I've picked a gray thread that's quite close to the color of the felt, and I'm going to stitch on three sides, leaving the bottom open. So I start at the one corner, bury my needle underneath, and I'm doing a back stitch again. And I'm making sure that I'm grabbing underneath so it's getting secured to the back, but I'm checking at the front to make sure I'm not coming all the way through to the front while securing it on. And I keep checking as I go to make sure I'm not stretching this piece of felt because it's so soft and stretchy. I wanna keep it shape. And I also want it to be lined up properly so that the book will close and it will be exactly where I want it to be. I decided that I didn't want this book to have pages and I only wanted to have this thick plush wool at the back and a pocket at the front and it makes it really functional, really portable and really, really cute. I keep checking to make sure that everything's in place and that I can close it and that it's working well and everything's placed where I want it to be. I'm really happy with the placement of everything and it's looking really good to me. Ah, have a look. It's finished. It's so soft. It's so nice to touch. Look inside. I can fit a bobbin of thread. I can fit a needle threader. And on the other side, I've got some pins and some needles. Look at that. It's enjoyable to look at. It's also functional. It's going to be such a great stitching companion for me. I can take it anywhere. I hope you decide to try one yourself. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.